Here's a Thursday, October 17th, 2019. Uh, my name is Chris Pagan. I'm the disabled guy. And, uh, it's been hell. There is no help from anybody in the system, especially when you have direct evidence of wrongdoing. Um, what you need to do is you need to look at the video of first con and last contact. In the description page, in the description part of the page, there is a link to a recording of the last contact that Denise had with Shane, or Shamir Mehta, regarding our overdue order, work order of 88 days at that time. It's over 90 days overdue now. That's three months, people. We called and, it's, and listened to the call from Mitch. Uh, the building inspector, because that's the way it's supposed to work, is they come over and do an impartial inspection, and it's over. It's corrected. They are not allowed to play with you for three months, get an order, and then pretend that you're the one who's not helping, who's standing in the way. They concocted the narrative, the story, and when we went to tribunal, there is no help to get in front of tribunal at all. There's no help anywhere with any of the medical. Matter of fact, Denise went to uh, legal aid, uh, community legal clinic, and they, they told her what was wrong, that they had not done it properly, that they didn't include uh, Carrie as a witness because that's the association. They, dis they dismissed all of our supported evidence, told that once we got there through all the difficulty we had, being told that, yes, okay, under Accessibility Ontarians with Disability Acts, we are letting you have a three-hour presentation where I did the best I could with what I had under all the stress with them doing what they're doing, which makes it worse. They interfere with every way possible, especially emotionally. They did not provide a safe place again. We were allowed to be threatened with police again because police are used as an intimidation tool. They are not here to protect. The only people they're protecting are the lawbreakers. And there is a cabal of silence in Waterloo Region. I was a volunteer. Look at the, I'm about to put up some, some shots of us performing from year, a couple years ago. I was a productive member of society as best I could, even in the middle of this, this, what do you want to call it, attack on my person because of what I had, because what I caught as a person with a disability, five years, the employer that I got hurt at was allowed to operate without a health and safety policy without a worker safety rep in place. They protected him. I lost my health care because I dared to speak out. I haven't had health care. I haven't had treatment. And they just exacerbate my PTSD. That's all they ever do is attack. And now they can come in my home. They did it once before in 2014 up the street. And there's evidence there that they're holding from us too because again, it's in the record. We went to the record. The Municipal Freedom of Information Protection and Privacy Act. You're supposed to be able to call up and ask for help and they, they run interference and they, they use your disability against you. <laughs> they protected, the, the law worked. They caught this fucking guy and they helped him to, to destroy our tenancy deliberately. Whether deliberate by error or mission doesn't matter. <laughs> but no, they're able to come in my home. I'm not safe. I'm not safe anywhere. This is a death sentence because they, they turned the law against us. They, they, shut off our ability to be heard and the whole reason why they're evicting us because we are no longer tenants of, Re of Waterloo then. We're no longer residents. We have no say. They attacked us in my home. I was, I was volunteering at Ray of Hope and the letters are there. December 20th, 2017, I was assaulted by Chantal Mann 
and Bailey, Bar Bailey Barnes. Jesse Enns, the manager, I went, we, you know, it was bad enough being assaulted as a person with a disability, trying to use disability facilities. But the big, and, and that tape of me playing on the 23rd was only a, a couple, three days after that happened. I, it was bad enough being assaulted and being, uh, at, especially after the relationship and, and all that. And, and not treated with any respect at all because there is no respect for disabled in fucking Canada. You're all fucking of the mindset that we are a, a, a drag on society. Oh, can a uh, duh. You don't want to see the reality. I don't give a fuck because you know what? I am done. These people have been playing with me for 15 fucking years and I am fucking finished. They have taken my... I'm the one who walks in there, supposed to be protected, and I get my health care taken away and I get my life destroyed. They created the PTSD because of their actions. Because of their inaction. Tribunal, security of person, every single federal politician right now, you need to answer the question. If we are free, if we have security of person as garnered in the Constitution, then why is it education? Health care, employment, legal representation, everything that is necessary for you, medical care. Any way to bloody well uh, bring anything before a court because this system is only set up for one thing to keep it from going to a court decision. I was brought in, they, again, they use this pattern of, yeah, we're here to help you. We, uh, December 20th, 20, 2017, I was assaulted a ray of hope. Uh, the process and trying to get it done. Any kind of human rights done in this region is shut down. I have recording after recording of reaching out. You are required to work with the uh, organization first to try and come to a solution before you bring it to human rights. I tried to do that because of our relationship, and I'm going to post those damn phone calls because they just ignore you. They, it's the same play every time. There's no coordination. They can't get it together to get the right things done, but they can certainly get it together to damage you and to use it to get a wedge issue to bring you into court. It's not court. It's a tribunal. And tribunals are quasi-judicial. This legal, this landlord-tenant tribunal dismissed all the evidence because they are not a court. They do not have to follow any laws, not civil procedure, nothing. And we are brought in there and abused to try and get there. Then we get there. We're promised a freaking oral presentation given three hours fully supported, fully documented with government bloody well documents and they dismissed it. We had a witness. They didn't even include it in the, in the order for eviction because it looks good on paper. Anything that makes them look bad, it's not there. The whole point is look the other way. There is nothing going on here. I was brought... They, I was brought in, the, look at the, at the video, I had to look at it again, and I had to be reminded of just how far gone I am, that they taken me, yeah, yeah, see, security, I am secure, right, I mean, I've got security in person when they use police as a means of intimidation, and nobody stops them, I'm, they invited me down to that courthouse under the premise of helping me. And then they attacked me in 120 seconds of the night. 19 officers I counted. It's Waterloo Regional Courthouse. It's Waterloo Regional Police that do the front gate. It's court services do inside. And, and all this time, uh, and read the letter, the email, where he's not able to do anything for you. It was supposed to be a charter challenge from the beginning. I have always said it's a charter challenge, and he couldn't even do that because it looks bad on paper. <laughs> Security a person, really? <laughs> they, they've been so 
torturing me unrelentingly for 15 fucking years because I happen to be disabled and I happen to catch this stuff on tape. That's why they couldn't do it in court of law, but I'm not allowed to comment on what got me there at all. The fact that the, their coordinator who invited me down didn't even show up until the second last day of trial. <laughs> they were, I was, I was brought in there and assaulted. And I'm treated like I'm in nothing. And when I got there after being, after being, <laughs> after being rep represented for nine months, they didn't believe me by saying they don't know I'm disabled. Then they made me watch that tape in court. I ain't pleaded with them. My car can't be pleaded with them. They can't do that because of psychological trauma. Even the trauma of having to cross the steps every time. And they don't care. Every time we pleaded with the judge, they just go, hey, crowd, you want another round? We, I was driven to the point of having to ask for an ambulance. And they refused. We reported it to the, the person in charge at the police at, at the courthouse and they ignored us. There's no help. That's why I, <laughs> I am not Canadian. I am not Canadian. <laughs> I have placed this dot new sign in my window saying that October 25th, next Friday, eight days away. I believe they're going to shoot me if that is the job. So I'm telling you, Brian Larkin, get your guts up, you motherfucker. Come and shoot me yourself because you're responsible for all of this. Sid Brown has nothing on you. There is a cone of silence in this Waterloo region. Any allegation of wrongdoing by government is covered up by all the parties. There is a cabal of silence to keep any kind of human rights abuse from ever being reported to human rights. I went to, when I was having trouble with the hospital trying to get treatment, and also with a lawyer who supposedly represented me at Social Benefits Tribunal for a lie they were telling that we caught them on, all recorded, the whole process recorded, including the hearing. You want to hear how they do it? You want to know why they're doing this to me? I am not, I stand right here. I am standing right here. I've been treated notwithstanding. When you're disabled, it's a label on your on your file where you are disabled from all protection. You have no protection, none whatsoever. They can make their constitutions and uh, root word con. It's based on all their laws based on British North America Act. It is an act. It's a fucking act. An act of terror on people deliberately because they have dirt on them by accident because they're not doing their goddamn job. I disagree. They are doing their job, which is to suppress, which is to deny, which is to obstruct, which is to vilify, victimize, and criminalize. I dare any of you to fucking try to stay with us. <laughs> I am a non person. I go to an MP, Catherine Fife. We went in there because I'm recording. They refuse to help me because I'm a disabled person. The NDP is supposed to be here for disabled and the undertrodden and the working and we have tried everybody. Every damn every damn party. It's a lie. They are all lying because they all work for the Law Society of Upper Canada and the Crown. It is a colonialist society that is a fucking terrorist organization. I have posted, I have written, my caregiver has written down. We have written, there's, 
on the video is a written email to all these parties. And we get nothing. They shut us down. I am done being abused. I go no further. We went a year ago. We went to go to CCAC, Community Care Access Center, right around the election. Original election, asking for assistance. Tried to set up. We, we got phone calls where we set up with the liaising with them to say, hey, here's the condition of my uh, disability. Um, I need a safe place. We need to work these things out. They're like, yes, we took a week or two to put that in place. We got called in for the meeting. The minute I started getting upset, all of a sudden, and I'm there to ask them to help me with euthanasia because I've had enough of this. I wanted to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. There's no choice. There's got no choice. <laughs> they attacked me again. I look behind me, there's an officer, two officers there. I got attacked. I brought it to the hospital again. And let me tell you something. I have never, I have never had a capacity hearing ever. <laughs> uh, sorry, I need a break. I'll be right back. I'm back. I'm sorry for that little breakdown. This has been so hard. And it's deliberately hard. They make sure that no matter what happens, you're going to have one of the worst experiences you ever had. That way, no matter how bad it is, the complaint, you will never come back again. Ever. Because they've been doing this for thousands of years. It's called a colonialist society. So we went into CCAC. Again, let me clarify. When you're brought in on a 72-hour hold, you're supposed to have a, if you are, you, whether, to prove that you are of capacity, you can demand to have a hearing up with a lawyer and a judge to determine if you have capacity. And you're required to have that without delay. It says right on the form, without delay. So I was brought in, I was not given a capacity hearing ever in any of the times that I, every single time the cabal worked exactly the same way. Somebody points their finger, you get brought in, doctor signs off on it whether you're aware or not, just like they did for me. They put you in the system, you are now under a 72 hour hold with no rights. And they have all the say. And I had a power of attorney in place. And I demanded, and I am still demanding a capacity hearing because I have never had one and they've been able to label me as mentally because they put me in their system because that's what it, what it looks like. Looks good on paper because I am a threat to them. Because I have actual evidence I could press play and now I've proven it because you got Shamir Maida's own words up there where they are vilifying us. He has animosity. You just go listen to it. Listen for yourself. He says he's going to be difficult. They have been nothing but difficult because they are covering up wrongdoing by the city. The rental, residential rental license, in our discovering of this, residential rental license is like Voldemort. Not to be spoken of, not to be said, not to be commented on. Listen to Mitch in the second phone call when he was forbidden by his director not to come. It says no person shall, which includes the director. This is a normal thing. We should have been able to call these guys. They come to an assessment. Three months of torture and, uh, and saying that we're the problem. Well, here's the deal with that. If I was a problem, they come over. Matter of fact, I was never here at any of the inspections because of my safety concerns and warranted by the looks of it. Because they did do the same tactics. They inv they invite you down, and then they attack you. When I went to CCAC, brought into Grand River Hospital again, again, 
ask a sound mind and body oriented a person, place, and time, and exactly what's going on to me, and that it was happening again. And the footage again, if you were able to get it, would show six to say seven officers again coming in to assault me for no reason. Just for the effect. Because they can. Guess the point, home, right? Whether or not you have any rights, whether or not you have any power, whether your power has been taken away from you, you have been dismissed, treated with notwithstanding. I was not given standing for a capacity hearing for any of it. And I went through your system. I was invited down there and assaulted and put in your system. CCAC was invited down there, was assaulted, and I went there asking them for help with euthanasia, and the report the police got was, I was, I was, it was said that I was threatening them with a needle. Because in my PTSD, I was going, give me the needle. I want the needle. Kill me. And these professionals, medically trained, professionally trained, supposedly highly trained and, and whatever with the government program of dealing with persons with disabilities, well, they're trained all right, but not in the way that you think. So when Shamir made it, when this one, and, and here I am, I have to feel, I have to do my life. I have to try and live through all this and try and find a way to, find, to eke out some sort of living. We go to, uh, rented a place before this. I had my studio, commercial space, rental practice all there for four years probably three two and a half before we uh, before they offered us a place upstairs in their building a uh, rental unit an apartment anyway rented that even because it was a commercial building there was a lot of stuff going on about not proper right units and commercial buildings we even went down to the property manager the city hall and checked the record and it said it was a it, that it was able to be a condominium or uh anyway a unit it was in there it's able to be a unit so we checked and everything seemed to be proper so we went ahead and rented it and this is a real estate agent again licensed real estate agent with real estate commission of or, whatever they're called, Commission of Ontario, with their business card, offering us, an un and, and we find out it's unlawful. They did not have permits. They did the building without permits. They went ahead and created this unit, rented this unit as a lawful unit. When we found out, we found out because the city came and did a check. And then we were caught in this limbo with them, and, and what they do then? Same thing. Landlord wanted to do whatever he wanted. He came over. He assaulted us. He he entered whatever he wanted. He do he did, he had carte blanche. They they evicted me from my studio, and they didn't even have the proper address on the fucking form for evicting us. Uh, in in our then they said, oh, it's commercial. So like I said, they play with the law. There is nothing there for to protect you. I have officers, again training. I'm going to put those videos up, Mr. Larkin. I'm going to put up every contact video I've had with w with Waterloo Regional Police where it's going to show your accessibility policy. So twice I went there, twice I get assaulted, and because of the one, that's why I wasn't, hey, everybody at, at, at my volunteer positions with Southside Shuffle and Blues Fest, that's why I wasn't able to be there last year. I was assaulted. I could not even be around people if I saw a police officer with a uniform. I... <laughs> the police are not your friend. They're only here to do one thing. It's a police state. And there is no help for anybody. If they're allowed... <laughs> we tried to, get a, tried to live our lives... Just get, go do our thing. And we got caught up with a, a, a lovely operating landlord, abused by them. Again, same pattern of behavior with the province, the city, and the region. And they are all equally responsible. They, you know, even with trying to get this order enforced, you get to run around and you end up going right back to the same place because it's one place that's doing it to us, to everybody. Shane Turner is deliberately, or by error or omission, not enforcing the law. 
to the point where he, if, if it's that bad of a policy, repeal the fucking thing. You don't have a right to attack us in our own home. I am sorry. I am not safe. And if this landlord, again, this is the second time, so we came from that landlord to this place. We told him this is lawful, right? We don't want another repeat of that shit. We were promised a fenced in backyard. We He could promise the fucking moon because it doesn't matter. They never uphold it anyway. It's all landlord. What the landlord wants, the landlord gets, especially when there's an, a deal, a land deal. This, I, because of my past treatment, this is why I decided to videotape the whole process and put it online for you and, and go back and remember, I was sitting there saying what they were going to do. This is the system of landlord-tenant, of anything to do with legal wrongdoing by the Crown or any of its members. You are shut out, you are denied, deflected, obstructed, vilified, Vic, further victimized, then if necessary, you won't let it go, criminalized, such as I was. So every point of contact, and again, always reaching out to this human rights community. So we come here. Yeah, no problem. It's not unlawful. Two, two years. Playing us along. All three of us. Nothing but harassing. Was going to go through with it, and all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, it goes, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go to the city. And then all this happened. So we have a work order nine, over 90 days overdue. That's three months, people. Three months. Again, this started in May. It should have been a simple phone call, coming out, do an evaluation, correct it, and let's carry on. And all the interference that the city, the province, and the region have, un have undergone is because when they do that, you have to go running to the, to the legal system. You have to go hire a lawyer. You got to go to a tribunal. You got to go get papers. You got to pay fees and whatever else. That's what it's about. They are not upholding the law. And the tribunal, like with the rent, rental tribunal, the reason why Davenport Road is happening again, you can go in there. You can give every bit of evidence showing everything, and they'll make a ruling. And then guess what? It doesn't have any bearing. That's why they're trying to get us out of here. Because then it's just dismissed. You have every aspect of supposedly giving us our equal voice, being obstructed, shut down, and used against us. Then we're given a, a token hearing where it looks good on paper that, while well, they had their say. We listened to them. Even though they didn't follow, there was many documents there. If they don't want to follow the rental license, that's fine. But their documents showed this man and his team do not tell the truth ever. Dismissed. We had, Kerry came in and gave testimony. Dismissed, didn't even put it in the, in the ruling. Because it would have looked bad if we were fully supported. They all discounted our tenancy association. You can hear Shamir Beta telling you how much the city recognizes tenants at anywhere, any point. Listen to the recording. It is very revealing. The city, I am going to say it, the city of Waterloo, the region of Waterloo, and the province of Ontario are engaged in fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud on the tenants and taxpayers of, of Waterloo and Ontario. It looks good on paper, just like Walkerton, just like Wetlaufer. And did you see Wetlaufer? The whole thing is about, yeah, there's these laws that protect us. When? They protected me? Really? I have to hire a lawyer. It doesn't exist. The lawyer that was, that was hired and put in place for me to protect my rights didn't even bring up a charter challenge because it was a week after Bo Baker was shot or a couple weeks after Bo Baker was shot on the lawn for for no reason because they didn't have enough time to go get the right person to talk him down when it's required by law. Wake up, people. It's not my fight anymore. My fight is done. I am finished. I You want to live like this in this lie? Mr. Trudeau, every and, and Mr. Trudeau, I ask you 
to raise awareness of disability in Canada, abuse in Canada, and you did. You boxed us in. Instead of getting in the boxing ring, you boxed us in. But let me be perfectly clear, it's not just Mr. Trudeau. It's anybody who swears allegiance to that crown. Anybody sitting in any kind of parliament anywhere. Any police officer, and that's why police officers are, are having a problem. Because guess what? They don't know the word all. They isolate because it's a police officer, and it, again, it's all work-related. Anything attached to work. They do not follow the law. Tribunals are there to circumvent the law, and every single thing that is needed for security of person is through tribunal system. The Queen doesn't rule anything. Look at Brexit. Woman comes out and gives one little speech, and all of a sudden everybody's hopping to her drum. Wake up, people. Queen Elizabeth, you are the most successful terrorist ever in this planet. Pat yourself on the back. But I'm going to tell you something. I am not going anywhere. This ends here. If this is not cease and desist by the city, province, and region immediately with the eviction and a full investigation into what the hell is going on, Brian Larkin, I invite you to come down here on, on Friday morning, 8.30 a.m., and shoot me yourself. Because I'm telling you right now, you better bring a body bag, and I am not going willingly. You will need to do this the hard way. And I guarantee you, somebody's going to fucking die. Me. You come do it yourself. There is no human rights in Canada. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to be treated notwithstanding. All you autistic pa parents with autistic kids out there, you're about, to, you're about to experience what they've been using against me and every other disabled person. And I am making a, a plea to every person who's disabled or ever dealt with for a person on behalf of a person with disability, such as Denise Duval, my caregiver. Because again, you're hearing me. You're hearing my story, but you're forgetting there's a caregiver here who has also been neutered, who's also been taken away the power because it's all just a runaround because every time you show up in front of one of those people, they're getting paid with your tax dollars. To not do what they're promising to do. So there's only one thing. Either this gets helped, this gets stopped and ceased immediately for eviction. And look at what happened here because it's obvious what's happening here. Or you, I'm dead. You can kill me because I'm not going any further. If you can come in my home where I have my security and you can fuck with this and there's no help for me there is no freedom it's all illusion and the fact that I finally get in their court room where I'm able to go hey here's the evidence that let us all here including here's the call from the person who called me in to be attacked a charter challenge the fact that these are my rights Mr. Gale was perfectly able to do a charter challenge but decided not to, because his job was to cover up for the region. This is a cover up. What they did, the, that tape there was nothing compared to what they did to me in the police station while I was caught on tape there. Like asking for to see the sergeant and being refused verbally. They thought they put this in the system. I just bend and, and everything would go away. I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce myself too. I'm the only, I'm the first single father in Ontario who fought his own case. The only time I hired a lawyer was for the trial. But I fought my own case for over two years and won a complete flip of custody. No help. And how did I do that? With the truth. Again, court system. We caught a lawyer lying under oath, got the transcript, proved it to the judge, and the judge is like, I don't see it. Somebody take this from me. 
I don't see it. They immediately took my copy of the transcript, ordered any other trans copies that I had to be turned over, and then made it impossible for people to get copies of transcripts without going through hoops. Because they got caught. And that was before my brain injury. That was just in their testimony. What he swore to in court, the Law Society of Upper Canada is nothing but a scam. They are not here to protect our rights at all. And if you, if I am able to bring my tapes forward, finally, you will see exactly how every part of this so-called system works. Like I said, security of person, every single thing, employment, education, health care, legal uh, representation, pensions, all governed by tribunal. Everything connected to what makes a person a slave, in case you haven't noticed. 12 years a slave, well, I've got to be. I'm 15 years a slave, going on 16. Well, no, I'm not going on 16 because that's a Friday, 8.30 a.m. If this is not stopped, you got to come down here with your cameras. I invite everybody to come down here with your cameras or just bring your popcorn and chairs. Watch the show. Watch the final act. And then you can sit there and say how they protected society from, from me. They are acting with impunity because there is no law. It's all an illusion. The law is a myth that they say protects you, and the only way you find out is you got to hire somebody and give up all your life savings and life work and, and time. Because, again, nine months of this harassment, provoking my PTSD unrelentingly, and now they're kicking us out on the street because he broke the law. What is your definition of the word unlawful, Mr. Uh, any of you? Mayor Jaworski, it's your bylaw. What is your definition of the word unlawful? For instance, it's unlawful for me to walk into a bank or anybody else to walk into a bank and take money out of there that does not belong to us. What's going to happen if any of us go into a bank and do what he did? Pick up the money and walk the hell out of there. Scott free unlawful rent for two years. It's your bylaw. We're caught in the middle, ripped apart with lies upon lies using the taxpayer's money to lie to the taxpayer this is the state of government in Waterloo region and like I said no matter which aspect of human rights you go to they shut it down I went to independent living centers they're supposed to help their whole mandate you're told the whole mandate is to assist people with disabilities the only thing I asked him to do was help me fill out a uh, police services form on behalf of myself and the officers. And, yeah, okay, Chris, you've been writing things down. You got them on the Internet. It is difficult for the, again, I have to go through everything and re-traumatize myself every time. This is me being re-traumatized from just watching that video the other day. I can't even... Every time I sleep, I got six cops beating me. And now family members helping too because nobody is helping me. I'm not worthy. I'm not a person. And you go to the you, you go to the system, there's nothing there. The last thing you're told is go to your representative. Go to your care. Go to your representative where they take care of workers. If they were doing that, we wouldn't have this discussion. None of them are doing it. It's all an act. And you go to them, a lawyer coming out of, out of law school by the Law Society of Upper Canada in a disability court saying, I'm not allowed to record from my memory because what are they so afraid of? Because of the lies they tell behind those doors. It's all a lie. A cop can come and because of whatever reason can point at me and say, this is that story. And they set into a motion, set into motion a series of events 
that there are supposed to be checks and balances. So if the cop goes, I think this guy's having a mental breakdown, when you get to the hospital, they do a capacity hearing to see whether or not you're of capacity because he is not qualified. And yet there's this pattern, and it's happened multiple times. That's why when Shamir made it and them were going, oh, yeah, we got a problem. Oh, no, we're not going to come to you. Why don't you come into us? Come down to the, to the city hall. It was the same playbook. Exactly. To the letter. The only thing that saved me is I was too smart for that. I fell for it twice before. And they they <laughs> drive you underground. I, after that last incident at CACAC, I barely left my house for a whole fucking year. Until this incident. Tom went into the hospital. <laughs> Tom died. And then they covered that up too. The minute he died, they they turned against everybody, and it's that's why they privatized hospitals. They privatized hospitals because now if anything happens, it's a private enterprise, and you have to go hire a lawyer and sue to get your own records. This is a closed system, a bullshit. I'm gonna post those. I, you know, the, the, the coroner, the coroner's office is supposed to be totally impartial. Go read. I'm going to, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to read their mantra, just like Bartis Chager and all the rest out there. Oh yeah, you got all these rights. We're here for you. We're working for workers and disabled and human rights. And it starts with human rights. Yeah, you're damn right. It starts with human rights. There are none. Not with standing. It's a legal term. It's the one where, you know, you go to the crowd and you plead your grievance and they go, no, dismissed, wave my wand, You're, you have no bearing, no standing. Any word you say, any evidence you bring, such as Mephepa release, documented, three-hour presentation with witnesses, and, and, and the, his documents weren't even complete. He's able to tell whatever lie he wanted to, and we demand that that transcript. Because everything we could, he said we could disprove, but you have to be in a court of law. That's the whole point. It will never get in front of a court of law. Because I'm no longer resident now. By putting us out, we are on the street. We have no place to go. We have no money. To go, tri he gets to triple his rent, our rent gets triple, we're on the street. There's no protection. This is a death sentence. That's why I accept your, your, I accept your fucking sentence. This is a plea to the public. You must stand up to stop this, whatever it takes. We had to use, everybody's going, why didn't you pay your rent? Because we paid $22,000 of unlawful rent in advance and landlord tenant board will not accept anything to do this nobody is because that shows they are not doing their job it messes with their business plan which is just to fuck with everybody and play both sides and never get in front of because you go to a tribunal you can have a decision in a tribunal after a hard fought decision and guess what the minute it's rendered it doesn't mean a damn thing except for your case because they are not set by precedent so that includes medical findings. And they've been using the American Medical Journal of Medicine for longer before free trade came in. And the thing you don't understand about free trade is that we traded our hospital system for that. That's why it's like this. We are now in line with the United States, rip you off while they fucking don't give you any service. Except for service up the anus. I don't need a colonoscopy. I've been so colonized that it's <laughs> colonized with colonialism that my ass has got nothing left to give. So in this time of a of a election where you have a say, really, you're not getting it. Ask any native. They've been doing this to them for 400 years, and they don't even have clean drinking water. Mr. Trudeau promised a change to the electoral system while he, he told the truth. They made it 
impossible for you to have a protest vote at the federal level now because they wanted to make sure what happened in Ontario with none of the above doesn't happen with them because it's all a scam and guess what the whole point is to get us all pissed off to the point where we need to stay at home so they can ensure that they only deal with their little demographic of engineered politics to be able to make it look like a good show on, on paper I'm serious I am done I have been dismissed by everybody because of the content of what I'm saying. I'm sorry that your sensibility can't take the fact that this supposedly doesn't fit into the Canadian psyche, that Canadians are, are able to do this. This is an internal refugee problem. I am literally a refugee. There is no difference from me and somebody sitting in a camp in Syria, except for I'm in a free and open society that respects dis disabled people called Canada. I have been stripped of my right to due process, as is Denise, as as the taxpayer. There is more than enough to show there's something going wrong here. And if this is not seized by the public ganging on to it, like I said, come to the execution. Because there will be a public execution here on Friday at 8.30, October 25th. I will not let this stand. And if I have to fall, then so be it. Where are my rights? I have the right to remain silent. I have the right to be abused at will. Again, we've written it down. We have sent emails. We have sent video. We have posted video to YouTube. <clears throat> Doesn't matter they will not be having any of it because it shows who they really are, what Canada really is. So Joe Canadian, he got his case of beer for doing his little fancy speech, and he's off in the back 40, drunk, passed out from all that beer he got for saying, I'm, Ca I'm Joe and I'm Canadian and I'm proud. Well, I'm Chris, I'm Canadian, and you're full of fucking shit. You want to burst your bubble? You want to take the blue pill or the red pill? Come down the rabbit hole. Hear for yourself. Don't listen to the crazy disabled guy who's got PTSD that they pointed their finger at and just waved it into existence. Even to the point where because I'm sitting here, you know, again, uh, family goes, well, there's mental health issues. He's got cognitive issues because he just doesn't get that we are not going to help him no matter what. You know, I got that. That's why it's toxic, and that's why those people are no longer around me. Well, people, that's a loose term. They're not people. They're the worst kind of despicable. And I hereby make a uh, pledge that everything that I own, I will be signing over to Denise Duval before I die. So there's no need for a will, because guess what? That's just another way to fuck with you. Anyway, Queen Elizabeth... You're the biggest welfare case that ever was. You know, we saw your, your throne speech the other day, and you notice all those diamonds around there? They're real. Every diamond on her head, real, stolen. That's all they do is feed off of everybody else because they are incapable of doing anything but. It is time to take colonialism and put it in the trash can where it belongs. You want to save this world, we all need to stand together. We need to take over our, our institutions because it's the democratic institutions that they so-called see as democratic. They've taken a long time to build up. That's why it's an institution. And it's these institutions that are preventing democracy because they're all a lie. The whole thing, including education system, is only behavioral modification system. They're just teaching you how to behave. And especially don't get involved. Well, you know what? This is your world. I don't give a fuck. It's not my world. One thing I've learned over 15 years, I have no business being here. I am here just to be abused and used and scapegoated, whatever the fuck. You know, and here you go. I mean, I can't even lift the shit. I go to move this stuff. I'm, I pay for it no matter what. And they make you pay for it. How dare we ask for the law to be complied with? How dare we ask? And again, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Regional Rep, 
it publicly in the paper, you keep saying this is to protect tenants. Right in the act, it says it's to protect tenants and the rights of human rights. Well, where? Here you have it with all this evidence of wrongdoing in your administration, multiple contacts to try and get some sort of, and you have a disability coordinator. Again, it's all a shine on. It's all a lie. It all looks good on paper. Well, maybe my death certificate will look good to you too. Because I'm telling you, this is not freedom and I refuse to be a slave any longer. I will not go further from here. I am standing right here, and if they take my home, they took everything. There is no safety anywhere. I am not safe. That's the message they have been putting forth. And they do it in such a way that they drive you underground so that you're not in public, and then they do something like this. Well, I'm done. It's your crime. And you all have a hand in it if you don't do anything to stop this. We've had to use our money to get storage ready. I've been using it to get materials and, and, and trying to get things done. You know, and again, for a person with PTSD to have to try and compile all this stuff when it's right there. I shouldn't have to do any of it. They're required by law to keep an accurate record. And again, we had MFIPA release where there was not one, there was only one fire inspection report on four properties. Four applications we got we got MFIPA for, and only one had a fire inspection. Guess which one it was? Right here, May 30th. They did not do a fire inspection next door until we caught that stuff. That will be the first fire inspection on file 498B. They are not following the law. They are circumventing their own law and they're using it against the people they aim to protect. And it's to protect the land deal, which I am not going to be surprised when we go to land registry office and we find out who owns the land. I would almost guarantee that Koopa Marku's name is going to be there. Because when we call Kubo, I call Koopa Marku when I found out two years later that that was not a uh, uh, client of Koopa Marku, I call. And when the receptionist answered the phone and I asked her about it, she goes, oh, that's Theo's fi folder or file. Active file. There's a lot more going on here than what meets the eye. And Karen Redman, I mean, again, ruling from on high, they all sit there and just give their opinion, which is unqualified, unsupported, because everything that they've discovered is sports our take on it. You know, fully unsupported, and yet they're able to have that wield this power to disrupt our lives, to interfere with our tenancy. To disrupt our lives for over 30, 90 days, three months. And again, if look at the rules. If I'm being the problem, which they're trying to put it on, again, it's disability is the problem, right? If I'm the problem, again, we were. I was never present for any of these inspections because of their, their background way of doing things, the threat to me. I have never interfered with them doing it. I have always just asked for compliance with the law. <laughs> If, the, if I was what they said I was, and they were trying to portray from the beginning, because again, that is first contact. They came with three officers, uniformed. Every single time they made a contact, they'd bring uniformed officers, and every time I wasn't here. But the intent was the same. They do not listen to anything that you ask. They do not accept any protocol other than what's going to work for them. Anyway, back to that. If, if I was that person... I was interfering. When they came to do anything, all he had to do was be there, and if I was interfering, they would immediately give me a ticket, a fine. And you want, you ask, well, why wouldn't they do that? Well, because the minute they give me a ticket or a fine, I have the right to appeal. When they serve the order on, on the landlord, 
they said he has the right to appeal. On the order, it says he has the right to appeal. But in the legislation, it says everybody has a right to appeal, including the tenant. And they didn't tell us that because they knew damn well. If we knew that, we would have appealed saying it's not far enough. So again, it's all an obstruction. Everything is meant not to assist the complainant who is trying to get the law followed. It is to maintain the unlawfulness of this landlord. And again, if they if they if everything was on the up and up, they granted him a license February 11th. When we started this process, they and the question was, is he allowed to collect rent without a license? They wouldn't even answer that question. But the biggest question is, why wouldn't they have came out and said he's been licensed? Because had he been licensed, we would have continued paying our rent, and we would have done it that way. So who does it serve by doing it this way? It's unlawful rent. There's uh, We did not write the law. Nobody's enforcing it. Nobody. It's a certificate of compliance as described in the act, in the bylaws. The building code is the prima facie which means the presiding legislation, which the provincial government, the federal government, the uh, municipal government, and the local government are all responsible for in equal measure. And they are because they just don't accept the responsibility and they put their stuff off on everybody else, especially complaining. We are asking this, the public to rise up and demand, and matter of fact, I'm, I'm asking Karen Radman and Mayor Jaworski, Regional Rep Jaworski, to immediately put a cease to all actions of eviction against us under human rights violation. This is a viol direct violation of our human rights and our ability to have security person because you are putting us out on the street in this climate, this market, with no resources, tapped out resources from trying to fight to preserve our rights here in the middle of winter where we get to go to your services and the whole reason why is because I will no longer be a resident of Waterloo so therefore I have no standing and they set the trap for the next people like nothing even happened so where do I go what do I do this is it I'm done so we are calling on the public to rise up and to demand that this cease and desist. I am asking the, the chairman of the Landlord Tenant Board to immediately suspend or stay this eviction on the grounds of human rights abuse. I am asking Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario, who has been avoiding us, who keeps hanging up on us, to intervene on behalf of our human rights and our disabled rights. And the fact that there is more than enough evidence that there is criminal wrongdoing going on here. Well, it's not criminal because it's a crown, right? We are asking for somebody to start a GoFundMe or something. We need to do, we need to raise money and create a team of civilians with legal advisors to prepare these documents for Superior Court of Justice or to bring a motion before Superior Court of Justice to have this squashed and to have them to demand to have this order put in effect. It was used as a tool against us on behalf of the landlord. And let me remind you, the landlord is required to meet all standards, not us. It says they're stackable and consecutive, which means $500 a day for every day that he remains, or part day that he remains, unfulfilled. That's 90 plus days. That's under 2011122, which is the property standards bylaw, which is very clear. And do yourselves a favor, if you rent in Waterloo, go look at the uh, rental residential rental license bylaw, which is 2011047. And especially the property standards bylaw, 2011122, which is the one they charged him under. And again, because they charged him under this, he's automatically under the Residential Rental Act. But they're not even applying it. It's Voldemort because it looks bad for them.
So we are looking for a legal representation to bring this to Superior Court of Justice, bring this into an actual court of law. We are also looking for help to put together uh, uh, offering to the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities because we've just proven for 15 years this is a closed system. And Mr. Trudeau, you lied. You lied on behalf of Canada, the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, in your report back to the UN. And the UN Special Rapporteur, this is proof. This is a public declaration, a video declaration of a person with a disability who is demanding whether I am de dead or not. As a dying declaration, this is my dying declaration. That Canada is a com country of abuse and lies. The Independent Living Center, when I went there to ask for help just for filling out a form on behalf of myself and the officers to SIU to complain, especially after we found out from the officer that they are not receiving proper training at all, which puts the officers in danger, they told me that they are not forbidden. They are not allowed to help me with something like that. That the only premise for me is to go to legal aid. Because it's a closed system. They are prevented from doing direct line advocacy for the disabled. That is handled by Arch Disability Management. Because they manage disability in Ontario. Lizzie Whitmer publicly declares that the work, Workplace Safety and Insurance Board's job is to manage claims and to prevent claims and reduce the amount of claims. That's funny, Liz, because I'm pretty sure the mandate of the Workplace Safety Insurance Board is to protect workers and keep workplaces safe for workers because we gave up those rights unwillingly. I have been barred because of my information. I have been barred from the tribunal at WSIB, even though all appeal time limits have been met. And the only reason why is because of my content. Provable. Direct interference in my health care. I have not received it. Because I walk into an employer, I get no health care. I'm treated as a pariah. And then they escalate to this. Canada's not free. I'm not free. I even applied for political asylum and I still do it. I am applying, I am asking for any country out there that has real human rights to please allow me come there. To get a, I am persecuted here as a as a international refugee in my own country. Because there's nothing for us here. The, the message to disabled Canadians is you are a damaged cow, casualty of war, which we all are. We're just cows, casualties of war. But we're damaged, so therefore we're not productive, so therefore we can, we can be dismissed. And let me remind you, when Hitler rose, it was these same things that drove him, and he was just a man. He was just a puppet, just like Trump is, just like Trudeau is, just like Catherine Fife is, just like Bartis Chager is. And Bartis Chager, you are the leader of the house. As you said, you're all very aware this is a legal issue. And we are forbidden from any kind of representation, including from our members of parliament, members of provincial parliament, or anybody who swears allegiance to that crown. I'm done. I'm hoping you people are. So if all we're able to do is get sent back, it's a legal situation that gets sent back into this abusive, circular, circular system of abuse and cover-up. What's your definition of freedom? That makes every mortgage holder, the mortgage is the chains that bind you to their policies. Regional government overrules every single elected and voted on principle, such as the municipal board overruled all this growth. That's because, hey, there's this is a growth industry. There's no way to protect yourself. None. And guess what? Even though the law says they're not allowed to rent 
with bed bugs or any of those things, they do all the time because they know. It's like Shamir Maida says in the video, hey, if you have a leak, just call us again. We're not here to fix anything. We're here to give you the idea that things are okay and then let them carry on so we can keep playing both sides of the field to exploit everybody and never have to prove we're doing anything we promised to begin with. My journey is over because I don't have faith in any of you. My rent's not going to get paid. We're going to be evicted from here. They're not going to acknowledge that over $22,000 that we paid in unlawful rent. And again, Karen Radman, Doug Ford, any of you federal fucking people, what is your definition of the word unlawful? Because the people at Landlord Tenant Board just don't want to know what that word means because it kind of puts a stick in. And again, that goes for any legislation that protects tenants, especially disabled ones. They don't want to know it because then they'd have to change their whole business plan that they've implemented and are executing at this moment. Anyway, I'm done. I hope that you guys uh, step up. I don't think you will. I think I'm done. Either way, I don't care. I am done of being tortured, and vilified, and victimized, and I will not do it anymore. And I'm left wondering what the words love mean, care, understanding, compassion. I know what it means to be Canadian, though. I am Chris, and I am Canadian, and I've been disabled by my government. By the colonial Commonwealth regime, that is, Queen Elizabeth II. You are the biggest criminal of them all. Why don't you go pat yourself on the back? You are God. Everybody bows to you. I do not. If you were here, I'd punch you right in the fucking face woman or not, and I don't hit women. Posthumously, because I believe that's what this is going to be, this is my dying declaration. Everything that I am saying and that I have said is true. As far as the, with regard to the way that the government treats people with disability in Canada. If you are a new Canadian... You just got suckered into the Canadian finger trap. There's a Chinese finger trap where you put your fingers in and you can't get out. Well, guess what? You just bought into the slavery trade of the Commonwealth. The British Commonwealth. Because we, Commonwealth, we are her subjects, her cows, casualties of war, to be milked, to be herded, to be corralled, and then to be slaughtered working for him for thousands of years and nobody stops him not even the Pope because the Pope, you're just another crown aren't you raised Catholic except for I'm not guilty never have been you're the ones who are guilty anyway dying declaration I'm hoping that if and when this happens to me that this becomes a dying declaration to the UN that there is no human rights in Canada, it's all a myth. That uh, they are able to do what they want, when they want, however the, many times they want. And it's all a lie. I am asking that you bring this case before the special rapporteur of the UN to tear this colonial bitch down in all of her glory. He brought up on uh, human rights crimes that that family and dynasty has been known for because guess what? All crowns are connected. They're all intermarried with each other. And it's their little squabbles that we get to pay for. So I hope, you know, we, we start a referendum across Canada on behalf of all the non-voters in this country. And the only question that we need to ask on the referendum is, is it time for the colonial aspect of this government to go? Is colonialism dead? 
we need to change every single document that is in the benefit of Canada because, again, Canada is the crown. When they plant that flag in the ground, that is the crown saying, I am now whatever this is that I'm sticking in the ground, and it belongs to me, all of it. And it gives me the right to come in here and just take what I want, when I want. Sound familiar? Nothing's changed except for your understanding of it because the institution of education is about behavior modification, make you good consumers, make you put your head down when there's trouble, make sure you're in the right line. You don't want to get in this line, not with the disabled and, and people that seeking human rights. Right? Just stand in line, sit down, shut up, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil then you'll have no evil in your life. That's a misnomer. When you see no, evil, see no evil, speak no evil, and hear no evil, you are evil. Anyway, not my concern anymore because I'm about to be I, uh, eight days from now. Is it eight? I'm not sure. Because it happens at 8.30 on the morning of the night. So, oh, sorry. Today, that's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight days. Eight days left. Because on the ninth day at 8.30 in the morning, unless this is stopped, I'm going to be dead. And uh, the landlord's going to get everything because I'm not able to lift it. We got a storage space that we're paying for and I can't even move it. And it's really special to be able to have to pack all this shit up, knowing what I know, and being forced to move yet again. Exactly the same way. 49B Marshall Street, we asked for the MFIPA release on them. And they refuse because they know what it's going to show. And we have all the record, everything documented from there too. That was forbidden from being released the first time. We did not want this. We did not seek this. We did not ask for this. We asked for a safe place to have a home. And our tenancy that we had negotiated to be honored and not to be interfered with and to feel safe in our own home, which we were told were safe because the powers that be say that they handle labor code, like all this stuff. It's all a lie. I'm done. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm putting out a video showing you how I was a productive member of society, how I was helping out until I got assaulted at Ray Hope when they're the ones I was helping to. I was assaulted at CCAC, Community Care Access Centers. Again, every single time trying to find a solution and it being used against me deliberately because that's their business plan. They got a courthouse to fill. It's a processing center. Anyway, I'm going to put up what I used to be able to do. And I got to remind you when you're looking at those references, I started doing it before I was assaulted but I continued doing it after I was assaulted. And I started doing it when we were home, made homeless the last time in 2014. Run out on a rail, 49B, in the middle of February as a disabled person. Again, no accommodation whatsoever. Intimidation. You go to the system that was there. We went to, uh, when I came back to town from Goderich, I was having heart problems. Had a heart monitor, trying to get regular health care and that had nothing was supposedly nothing to do with my injury but because it was a head injury and it interfered with my autonomic system circadian rhythm that was connected to my accident and that's why I wasn't given any health care but when we came back they had just started the community legal clinic downtown through the soup kitchen so Denise and I again went through the soup kitchen nursing there and we had meetings we had meetings where we were calm and we were able to explain exactly what the problems were. We brought fully documented evidence in. Okay, we'll look at this. Get a doctor to call you. 
kept on asking, you know, needling me and needling me again when it should have just been a matter of, and, and we showed them documents where harm was reported on the document, but never reported anywhere else. And anybody it goes to, nobody did anything about. So we're sitting there calmly going through everything, thinking, well, now we're finally going to be able to get a, get an interview and somebody check out my heart and get some answers. And instead, freezing happened. In my video where, if you see the end, again, it's the actual assault that I was invited down to the courthouse to participate in, unknowingly, back May 1st, 2015, again, less than a month after Bo Baker happened. So if my story came out at that time, what, what would have happened to Waddle Region? So the whole point was cover it up, keep it in-house, appoint a lawyer who just happens to be one of the lawyers who helped set up the disability court in the regional courthouse in Waterloo. Do not change venue. Do not allow him any leeway when it comes to reviewing the evidence. Do not even collect the evidence. Do not take steps to collect evidence, and even if he did, based on his letter, he's not allowed to. He's prevented from it. Why was he prevented from doing a charter challenge? That was right off the bat. It was always a charter challenge. I had said that from the beginning because of the details with the hold, with interfering with the power of attorney. With inter they got my daughter involved because she was going to nursing there. And my daughter, that note that she wrote about I'm out of my mind and concerned is because I had just been attacked and almost murdered. And she saw me coming. I didn't even know she was there. Didn't even know she was there. She had no right to be there. But it served their purpose. Utilizing her as a go-between because Denise was first decision maker on my power of attorney. Ashley would be secondary if Denise was incapable or unwilling. Denise was neither incapable or unwilling, and they kept on, well, I speak for myself, or, you know, like I said, it's all there. They just, they don't do anything for the patient. It's all about what it looks like. What happened to me in there every time was a crime. What is happening to me now is a crime that has gone unfettered, unpunished, and, like I said, what, what do I got to stick around for? To be your meat puppet? To be your toy? Not going to happen. I'm done. This system is a sham. Everybody knows it. You're just too afraid to speak up. So I did it. And a brain injured guy figured all this out, right? What does that say about all of you? Anyway, I don't have much faith. No reason to. You guys are much more stuck on the entertainment. So I am asking for help to put together a human rights complaint against federal government and provincial government and the Crown in Britain, all connected, all the same abuser notwithstanding I am asking for us to start a referendum too that every person we need to have a referendum across Canada to answer one question do we return the favor God says treat other people the way you want to be treated well they've been treating people like this for centuries even up until today in this so called free society well I beg to differ and everything shows, and if you look at what's actually going on, you'll see that everything is meant, even in the court system, to never get it as a decision. Especially when it comes to government wrongdoing. They always do a settlement out of court just before you have a rendered decision, because a rendered decision becomes precedent. Stops them from doing it ever again. The one thing the Crown is set against is precedent, especially when it goes against them. That is their only function, the only purpose of anybody in, in government. So go ahead and waste your vote again. You're voting for this colonial system if you vote for any of those people in any election. So my claim, my call is this. 
We need to have a clear referendum of notwithstanding. The crown must go. It is not welcome in Canada anymore. You want to be a museum relic where you charge a nickel and hold a tin cup? Go right ahead. But your rule is over. And until that, until that happens, and they will never let it happen, they will shut down this scam called democracy, this act. You know, you gotta, you got to understand something about these people. They like to rub your nose in it. So they called it the British North America Act because it's just an act. That's, that's the codicil that the Constitution is based on. And that's why our con institution, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it's, not, it's nothing. It's a charter. A charter is nothing. Look at the British North America Act was a charter. Didn't do a bloody thing. They're able to act with impunity. I mean, look at her. She comes out, she goes, Oh, I don't rule the world at all, but I make a throne speech saying you better get it done. And look, they got it done. Oh, my God. How dare you interfere with my finances? Queen Elizabeth, you are the devil personified on the planet. And anybody who does your bidding, well, you figure it out. It's time we end the sly. I mean, they're just doing it to soak taxpayers for money anyway. Because, like I said, ask yourself, look, hey, parents with autism, anybody who's dealt with government any, ever before, have you felt treated notwithstanding? You go to the lawyer and they go through the motions to be, oh, yeah, well, we got something going on here. Don't worry, give it time, but let's wait. You feel notwithstanding? The minute you sign that paper, it says that uh, regardless of what you want, the lawyer can turn around and make any deal on your behalf as if you made it yourself at any time. And it can be totally diametrical to your wishes when you hired him, such as Mr. Ferguson deliberately sabotaging the case. Every lawyer that was involved with my trial, trial, a regional courthouse, notwithstanding, didn't cut, they came out of law society or wherever they got trained, what, what is it, Toronto or London, didn't have a clue about what disability rights are that I have the right to record because of my disability. City of Waterloo, uh, I was on ODSD and family benefits as a person with a disability, which you were fully apprised of when you managed ODSP in that. So for you to say you didn't know I was disabled or to not treat me in the proper manner, or better yet, forget about me. How about any policy to deal with any person with a disability or, or caregiver? Because I was not the only one shut down. My caregiver was shut down too. About my disability issues, about her disability issues. Because the only people they listen to is the ones you have to hire at legal aid, community services, or your own lawyer who is bound by this secret cabal of the crown does no harm. Well, I would ask anybody who's been harmed by the crown for their opinion. Mayor Halloran, you have until 12 noon, and Redmond, and Doug Ford, you have until 12 noon tomorrow to come out and explain what unlawful is and to have this cease and desist to stop this abuse of our rights as tenants and as disabled people and as victims of a crime that appears to be fully supported by your administration and orchestrated and conspired with with regard to this land deal and also the fact that the question of February 11th till now. What, what's what been going on? If you do not, I will be calling a press conference. And I have a sign in my window right now inviting people to the execution. Because that is what this will be. I am not going to allow you to allow this criminal to get away with this again, Scott Free. You murdered Tom. All this stuff contributed to his death, and when it, when it happened, the hospital broke the law. 
knowingly broke the law and the minute we found out about it and started questioning it's a private hospital security get them out they're trespassing you go through government and they're supposed to help you while they run interference the coroner's uh, the coroner's office if you go to the website states that they are impartial they're not there to determine fault or a wrongdoing or whatever it's just to examine the case and yet we have St. Mary's General Hospital closing ranks with the coroner for the hospital for the region the local coroner the actual manager supervisor for the region interfering again when that happened it should have just been a question of okay the request has been made there's more than enough request here and they even they used her as power of a tur I mean as next to kin when he was alive the minute that off and on at their whim because they were covering their mistake the minute he died she was not next to kin they didn't have to listen to her about anything so when we sat there and said there's a problem here they went to cover it up and they went to shift his body out and get it all quietly put away oh he died of his heart operation right no he died because his medical directive was not to continue and his medical directive in spite of common law common law does not change that aspect you could be common law you could be married if he puts down on there no substitute decision maker but the doctor that stands that's his medical directive and I want to make clear to everybody who on CC cardiac care intensive care unit at St. Mary's Hospital and everybody every industry I've, I've railed at you did nothing wrong you did your job, you did your best, you did what you were supposed to. It was your administration that let everybody down. It's a system that made a mistake and covered it up because again, when they talked to the lawyer advocate office, that lawyer advocate office had one duty and one duty only, to represent Tom. They should have came to the hospital immediately. They should have put a cease to it. But instead, they came up with a plan to, oh, well, just ask her if she's common law. We're covered then, right? Because as long as nobody files anything afterwards, we're good. It's the whole point. Anyway, I'm going to release the, I'm, I'm waiting to find out if that's been uh, concluded yet. And if it has, I will be releasing those tapes and you can hear for yourself. You think you're safe? Privatization of hospitals? There's a reason for it. It's called an agenda. It's called not with standing anyway goodbye